Okay. Hi everyone. So welcome to tonight. That is our first session. Um, I'm a, an artist in the Northwest and I thought that it would be really interesting to run through some stuff with you tonight um, about one of my favourite artists. I really just get back to a little bit of nature, um, get into looking at our surroundings a little bit more, but in ways that we might not have originally done that so looking at other artists is a great way to explore lots of different techniques um, and ways in which they would see the world differently so tonight I thought we would look at Georgia O'Keeffe and I don't know if any one of you are familiar with Georgia O'Keeffe but she is um, a fantastic artist um, that was born in the 1800s um, and lived till she was 100 which is fantastic the work that she must have produced in those years um, you know you can only imagine what a loft looks like about its chocolate block but I think that um, the why I picked Georgia O'Keeffe is because she loved drawing lots of different things from landscapes um, to flowers. And again, she drew them in such a diff different way than we would actually see them. Lots of abstract colours and shapes. So I'm just going to run through a little bit of a work tonight and then we're going to go and explore our own. So what you need is something to draw with, something to draw on. Um, and it'd be great if you've got a reference photograph or if you've actually got anything like flowers that you could use, anything that you can find around the house. It might be that you've already been off exploring on your one hour exercise. Um, so you might already have some um, things that you've foraged and found on the way or maybe even some photographs that you've taken. So I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes just to get yourself ready. So you'll need pencils, pens, um, if you've got them. You can even use watercolours, whatever you really fancy to create. It's entirely your work tonight. Um, you're just bringing me along for the journey. So a couple of minutes, get yourself ready, get yourself comfortable, and then we're going to start. Um, so I, I think that if you, you can kind of gauge what photograph you're using, so it might be just chatting to Megan earlier, you know, poppies to get your reds, get your greens ready, um, things to hand that you know that you're going to use, because in an hour we've not got long, but I'm hopefully um, going to start you off. And then if you do need to continue after this hour, then you can carry on and you'll hopefully get that momentum. Okay, so just another couple of minutes, let you get yourself sorted. And then we're going to start. In fact, first, what I was going to do, which I've just remembered, and you're going to forgive me for, it's a little warm up exercise. So, excuse me, before we jump in, we're going to do a little warm up. Um, so you just need a blank piece of paper. I've got one here. Just need a little blank piece of paper. I'm just going to mute this. So you should, so you should, should be able to see this screen now. And what I want you to do is I want you to fill the area with circles. So I want you to just feel free, stretch out, make sure that you're drawing from your shoulder, make sure that it's coming from your whole entire body, which is um, what we do to, if you was training, if you was running, if you was doing something like that, you'd warm up first. So all I want you to do is on your piece of paper, just simply draw some circles. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just put a darker pen. This is what happens when you've been doing art for so long. You have materials on standby, which is a good thing. So you go as slow and as fast as you like. And all this is doing is, say, is warming up. And make sure that it's coming from your shoulder as you're drawing. So you can see my shoulder moving here. You can overlap them. You can make a pattern with them. But all this is doing is just getting us to think about our arm movements, connecting our mind with our hand, making small decisions as we go. Disaster if we've forgotten to warm up. So just want to keep filling, keep the uh, big ones. Go for it a while. Might want to be nice and collective. Small dots. 
whatever you fancy. Just fill that page. Just get that arm connected to your mind. Okay. Very quick exercise. And I recommend that you do this. You do this in a lot of unis to get the students ready on fine art degrees. So it's a tried and tested method. Okay. So are we all doing that? So the next um, slide that I've got for you is just a little bit into George O'Keefe and then we'll go from there. So apologies that I missed that off first. So. Okay, that should be better now. So she was born in 1887, like we said before, and there's a picture of her young, younger days. Um, and, and ones where she was um, actually in Mexico, she moved to Mexico in her later life. She was known to venture into lots of uh, deserts to paint um, so many different real um, amazing vast scenes of the desert. Um, but this was actually a picture that she uh, painted for some advertisement of Hawaii. Um, and you can see there the, just the shapes of the mountains, a little bit of a waterfall, really beautiful areas that she immersed herself in so that she could really explore nature. So the one that I was um, really interested in um, was this image. And I just want you to have a little look at it and think about what it says to you. What do you actually think it is that she's drawn here? What she painted? What does it remind you of? And it's great when you look at her work because, you know, when she explores nature, she really does simplify it. And you might have heard of abstract art. And what that is, is when the artist relies on colour and line um, and shapes to create something different. So here she's got lots of flowing lines, loads of really earthy natural colours. Um, and it's actually a river that she's painted. Um, you might be able to see that, that path that she's drawn all the way through the centre um, to the top. It reminds you a little bit of the riverbed with the sediment, but really lovely natural colours that she's used. And it's almost like an aerial view. So she's looked at it from the top as it's made its way through that the mountains. But again, just a little bit of text on the screen. She simplifies shapes and forms. And if you can imagine the time that they lived in, um, you know, this image was painted in 1920. That was absolutely, you know, it was pioneering. It was unique and it was really brave of her to step out of the traditional art that people seen in that, in that time. Um, so she was doing things that other people um, maybe didn't value and definitely didn't think to do either. So I'm going to show you a couple of images and I just want us to get used to actually um, drawing some things um, and looking at her style in order to do that. So the first thing that um, I want you to think about is what colours is she, can you see on these two pieces? Um, how does she use the page? How does she fill that? And we could start talk about composition, um, you know, in terms of is it over on one side? Is it big? Does it go off the page? Is it small? It's lots of detail. Can you see any pattern in there? Um, and maybe just think of one word that you would use to describe it, something that you might think is inspirational, um, or you could you could tell a friend and you could say, well, that piece was really vibrant or bold, um, or it was really um, beautiful. You know, think about um, how you would describe it. So this is the first image um, and I'd love to um, see what you think if any of you are in the chat and I know this is on Facebook Live too um, or YouTube and um, so what does it say to you? Are the colours natural? What do you think those swirls are in the middle? Is that some sort of reflection would you say? Can you see hills and valleys? Um, and what do you think she was feeling potentially when she painted this? It's a really exciting um, piece of art just because of the um, amount of bold colours that she used at the time. And to even say that we would see these colours naturally in um, sunsets and things. Nature has a beautiful way of 
um, showing us some awesome colours that we wouldn't never normally see. So I don't know if you've seen that mackerel sky of a night, which is those really pinky purpley tones, orangey tones. Um, so not all colours have to be, um, I suppose, the way that we think they are. Um, they do change, don't they, um, in terms of what time we're looking at them. So um, this was a landscape and those in the middle, some would say that potentially trees. So she's actually tried to depict some trees in these. But what I want you to kind of think about is how she's used, used that page and that it doesn't actually look like it, what, it, what you would see um, it realistically in real life. So maybe, well, I hope it wouldn't be, but you may see trees like this. This would be a lovely place to go. Um, but she's used her own design and thinking on this. And so this is a picture of um, two lilies really close up. But what does it say to you? Do you think it's calm, neutral? Would you say that it's um, realistic? It looks like what it should look like. What type of colours is she using here again? And what's really important with this piece is how she's actually placed the image. Is it close up? Is it far away? Um, and why has she done that potentially to exaggerate those lovely flowing lines that you can see through? So that's enough art history for one night. We really want to get involved and we want to get drawing. So I'm going to set you your first little task good to do. Oh, sorry. I've got my slide as well. Still my first session. This is the, um, the one in the desert where I told you about where she actually moved to Mexico. And, you know, she thought that bones and, and things that maybe people didn't think of as beautiful were. And she uh, made it a mission really to paint um, things in this way really beautifully. So I want you to um, find an image that we spoke about before that you'd love to draw. So it could be a flower, even a landscape if you wanted to, that would work perfectly fine. Um, and I want you to draw it in four different ways, but very similar to Georgia O'Keeffe. So if we recap on what she um, did, so she filled the page, so as you can see back here, massive um, uh, close up of that flower, um, you know, the there's not one scrap of space on the page. She used bold, bright colours and realistic colours, so you could take your choice. Um, and she used lots of tones, so you can see that she's tried to create that 3D shape by creating some shade. And there are lots of abstract shapes, but in most cases, you can still tell where it is. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is to split your page in half. So you want to split it down the middle. So I'm just going to do it here. Yeah. yeah, split your page in half and I want you to look at the image and I want you to draw what you see. So just very easily, um, you know, in your own style, don't worry about it, not looking correct. Just just go for it, dive right in and think about some of the details that you can see. This here is one of my favourite plants. It's called a bladder campion. I don't know if many people have seen this, but you will be able to find them. Um, knocking about, they're a wildflower um, and they bloom actually at this time in May till September. But I love this little plant, it's got lots of interesting shapes and details um, and it's a wildflower so it's, it's, it's free to look at and free to find which is even better. So where I'm going to start is just at the bottom of this little flower and I'm only just going to use line, I'm not going to add any detail at this point. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the shapes that I can see. So we're simply just drawing it out and you wanna really try to observe. So you should be looking at your picture or if you are drawing the real flower, a lot more than what you're drawing, what you're looking at when you're drawing. And in that way, so if you keep going back to the image, we know that we can make sure that it's correct. So I'm just drawing this little section here. I want to spend about five minutes on this, just really get into grips with what we can see. Think about the shapes. And when we're drawing, it's really easy to um, get caught up in how complicated things actually look. But if when we when we think about drawing, if we draw 
um, things as in they are shapes. So if we can see circles or squares or rectangles, straight lines, curvy lines, then it's going to be easy for us to actually identify what we're drawing. So we can see here that the top of this flower is really round and it's almost like an oval but flattened out at the bottom. So if we think about shapes and, and objects in this way, it can become easier for us to actually work and draw. So unfortunately, I can't see where you're all up to, but I'm sure you are making fantastic progress. Just keep going and working that detail over a little bit and it might be that you know you can turn the flower around or you might want to look at a second image for the next picture but as I say we split our page in half and we're going to draw two and then what we're going to do is we're going to pick the best out of that two and then we're going to draw it and I'm going to show you a really easy way of how to draw it in Georgia O'Keeffe style and people I think you're a professional and they've been studying Georgia O'Keeffe for years. So just a very quick drawing. And when you're observing, you might notice lovely little details that you think, actually, I really like that. I want to keep that. So that's my first drawing, everybody. And can you see this? Very, very basic, just an outline of what I can see. Yeah. And for the next one, I'm actually going to choose another flower that I really like. So hopefully you can see this too. And I'm just going to concentrate on the shapes that I can see. Add the details there of the pollen. And you might have some, you might decide whether or not you want to keep it in or leave it out. It's your work, it's entirely up to you. The more that I'm talking, for all you young ones out there, I don't know whether you know Bob Ross, but for the more that I'm talking, the more that I'm channeling me in a Bob Ross, which I don't know whether it is a good thing or not. Oh no, I mean, he is a legend. And for those that haven't heard him, definitely go and have a look. He loves wildlife and squirrels. He's got the coolest hair ever. <laughs> At least somebody knows who he is. If he's on YouTube, you can go and find the picture. Um, and he's got some great videos as well. Some of them even brings his squirrels to work. So we're on our second flower here. And again, just a really quick study to get us used to looking at the shapes of these flowers. I'm going to give you another just a couple of minutes to finish yours off. Push mine a little bit, but that's okay. So again, hopefully you can see that. Just a little interpretation quite basic but these flowing lines are going to be really interesting for when we start thinking about Georgia O'Keeffe's style when we go back to that um, style that she painted in. So there's my two examples back to back so hopefully you can see them. Two. There's number one. Give you one more minute. Hope you're all enjoying this. And it'd be lovely to find out. And if you are on Facebook Live, if you type in what type of flower that you've been painting or you've been looking at, that'd be really interesting as well. Um, because I'm getting into a bit of a, gar of a gardening um, geek, but I'm still nowhere near where I should be. Um, so it'd be great to see what other flowers that you've actually chosen. This one's a, a tropical flower, um, which I think is quite pretty and colourful. Great, great fun to draw. 
All right, everyone. So we've got our two images, or there or thereabouts, and we've been drawing them. And I know it's a very quick fire thing, um, but we're going to be able to add some detail and some colour um, in a second. So what I want you to think about is how do we get it from the drawings that we've got? So like this one, how do we get it from that into something like George O'Keefe? Well, it's really easy um, to sort of mimic George O'Keefe style if we draw everything big. So the bigger we make it on the page, the more abstract it looks and the easier it is um, to fit into George O'Keefe style. So the, the screen that you can see now, hopefully should say um, that I've zoomed into the image. So I've just chosen that little tiny bit of the flower and I've made it really big. So it actually looks like something that you may find George O'Keefe in terms of her sizing, in terms of how she paints her work, um, very similar. So, um, this is just an example of what I've done and you can see how um, on the right hand side is a zoomed in version of the bladder campion and how I've actually made it bigger. So what I want you to do is to split your page into four now. So you want to get onto a new page. Yeah. So we're going to just split it right down the middle. And then you want to put it in half again. Now, if you're drawing the image from a photograph, you could simply, and it might be on your phone or another device that you're not using at the moment, you could just pinch a screen and zoom in. If you've got a photograph or if you've got an actual um, image in front of you, or even on your screen would be fine as well if you're using that, then what you should do is just get a third piece of paper and just rip a little window in it. So you're creating it's a tiny little window. I could do it neater than that if I've got some scissors. If you've got some scissors, that's fine. But you can rip it. You know, there's no problem in that either. And what you want to do is just put that over the, the image so you're, you're making sure of what you're drawing so you can actually make that bigger on the page. So say, for example, if I was drawing... This is a great book, by the way, 50 Women Artists. If I was drawing this image, then I could just move that across and actually... Even if I wanted to put a black piece of paper, so I could actually find the area that I wanted to draw. Okay, and you could do that over your flower. And then when you've got that image, I then want you to blow it up on the page. So, for example, I'm gonna redraw this for you now. So this is the image on the right hand side. Let's move this part. Okay, and nice and big to fill this square. And what I want you to do is play around with what they say is composition. So actually the makeup of the work. So nice and big. And fill the page. And the bigger you go and the more abstract you make it, I mean, Look at Georgia O'Keeffe's example there, how close up that lily is. You could even go even further with it. And what's nice about some of these flowers, particularly this bladder campion is that they've got, and if you've not got an image, please feel free to use this one too. Is that it's got some lovely markings on it. So you could make it nice and big. So we've gone from, let's hold that one right. So we've gone from our normal size image that we've drawn, a little sketch of, is the first one, to the next, blowing it up to a bigger one. And again, play around with these, play around with the different um, images. So you can see that I've drawn four examples for you there, all in different. Um, places maybe again you want to turn the flower around or use a different flower that's entirely up to you if you want to work from that um, but what we want at the end of that is four images that have been zoomed in or close up of these flowers um, so that we can have some fun um, 
in a second, maybe adding some colour to it. Um, and if you haven't got colour, then I'll show you a really good way of adding shading um, through cross hatching and mark making. And if you're well ahead of me, then please feel free to start adding colour now. Um, you know, as again, um, I say, you know, I've come on your journey tonight of painting and creating art. Um, so we're all in this together. Um, and we all work at different paces, which is absolutely fine. Yeah. It just means that you can carry on and enjoy and immerse yourself. And it might be that you've drawn it like, like me quite quick, just demonstrated, but you might feel like actually it didn't look quite right. Well, that's fine. Use the four to practice, the four different areas to practice. Or maybe you, you might even want to go even bolder. Or you might want to take some things out. I mean, after all, if we remember Georgia's um, painted of the trees, they didn't look like trees and that was okay. That's what she wanted to look for it to look like. You know, so she used swirls and different types of marks to create that. And it might be that you want to interpret your work like that too. I quite like this blood of campion. So I'm just going to have a little practice. Keep an eye on the time to make sure you've got time for your final one. And I'm actually going to go really big with this and just draw the end or the frilly bit. And it's, uh, it's not the technical term at all, but the only one I know at the moment. So you say I'm a flower geek, but actually I don't really know very much about them. Uh, I'm sure it comes with experience. You know, and when you're creating artwork, just remember that, you know, there's always something good to find in, in it. So if, you've, if you feel it's not worked for you, maybe you, instead of, you know, thinking, well, I'll choose a different flower, um, or I'll move on to something else why not think about um, what you do actually like from it and and transfer that across and make sure you keep that or see what you don't like and what you think was least successful and change that bit and I think the more that we practice it's like anything um the better that we get I'm not particularly a fan of saying that people are talented artists to be honest because I think it takes a lot of hard work and determination and anyone can do that if you put their mind to it. Um, it doesn't have to be everybody's cup of tea what you make. That's fine because it's our work. So I've finished my fourth one. I've just played around a little bit, only very slightly some of the composition. And I'm going to give you another few minutes to just finish yours off. Um, and for those that are ahead um, and may not have any colours or are thinking about, well, I don't have any colours, how do I colour that in? We know that Georgia O'Keeffe uses tone. Um, so you can see in the lilies at the bottom of the screen there that actually we could create some of that. And these are probably quite nice to um, show you with. So what we want to do is just create cross hatching. So all I'm doing is just adding a row of lines together. And this again is very therapeutic. You can do it nice and slow. Um, and then to make it darker, make it into a cross and we cover it with more lines. And you can keep covering and keep covering until you have this gradient from dark to light. Okay, and you can do that as well if you want to add some depth into your work. So for those that are finished, why not start adding this? And again, you know, keep looking back to your flower, keep making sure that you're adding shading where it actually is. It's quite easy sometimes when we're drawing um to make up some things and again that's fine especially when we're doing things like abstract art um but that might not be what you're going for either so you can make these choices uh, add some lines and obviously as the weather warms up 
and we're now in this place where more and more are growing. Hopefully you'll be able to find some more flowers that will inspire you. This is a really simple uh, technique to add shading and great if you find yourself even out and about and you decide actually I'd love to um, draw something but I haven't got any materials on me if you've just got a pen it'll help you to remember when you get back home or wherever when you are drawing where everything went so just a bit of us. so hopefully you should all have your four drawings now and you want to start adding a bit of color and tone so i just want you to um work on four of them and just play about so um, you might even have some paper if you want to stick some collage in we've got another 10 15 minutes um to just uh, work on our four little images and you can even bring the other one back if you wanted to add colour to that so one where we originally drew uh, the image but you didn't think you'd have five drawings so far of flowers you're doing amazing um and again you could just use something like a coloured pencil so you could even make these colours up if you wanted to if you wanted to work on some different colour combinations or if you wanted to do something a little bit more subtle as we say with some cross hatching um, and what's really interesting is you might only have a, a small range of colours, but if you press harder, then it'll go darker the colour. If you um, press lighter, then you'll get a lovely, um, nice, subtle tone. And for some of the uh, coloured pencils, you can also mix and blend them. So um, you'll be able to create lots of different colours as well. And the way that I like to use them is just in small circular mo motions, um, just so that I know I can blend it a little bit easier, but it's entirely up to you. You know, we've already looked at cross hatching. Maybe you could use them to cross hatch as well. And I think I'm going to go bold and abstract with this. And I'm definitely going to add some cross hatching in another colour because if I can't play outside the box today, painting and drawing, then, you know, when can you? So you might want to add some cross hatching and just add colour. And if you've got some watercolours, that would be beautiful just to add little different. Um, bits of colour here and there. Um, I picked a, a, a nice light plant really so there's not much colour but if we went back to um, something like a pink and um, red paradise Hawaiian uh, flower then that would be really interesting. I'm just wondering how Megan's got on with her bright red poppy. Um, I bet that'll be um, really great to see some of the colours that come out there too. So you can add comments into the chat, I think on YouTube, but let us know um, what type of colour combinations you like. Is it um, the Sunset Georgia O'Keeffe, which is used really bold, bright colours to represent that atmosphere and that mood in the sky or where she may have been. You know, she must have been quick to capture that because they don't last long at colours, do they? They don't knock about for long. And again, we can just blend. Think about the pressure, how we use the pencil. Think about how hard we're actually pressing on the page. Do you want to add some colour in there? That isn't what we can see. And don't forget as well, um, the background. So what is, um, Again, something Georgia O'Keeffe does is she completely fills the page with colour, with with um, lots of shapes. So it may be that you want to add something into there too. And again, you don't need fancy materials, just a little splash of colour here and there makes such a difference. You can add lots of uh, broad strokes and marks. Obviously, we can't see any cross hatching in Georgia O'Keeffe's work, but it's a really simple way to add some colour and tone to our own. Yeah. She painted in oil paintings, which is again is totally different um, to potentially what we're using today. Unless somebody's got a setup at home, I can just imagine you out there at the moment with your beret on, your paintbrush dipping into the, the turps and your oil paints. 
And it's great if you, you know, if you do want to get serious and invest in some of these things, really worth doing. Um, and potentially we can give you some advice on, you know, what's worth investing in, what would be useful for you. There's nothing better than working in watercolours for me. I love just being able to play about with lots of different colours and I sometimes really like finding images of magazines um, and just watching some of the colours that I've seen just to improve on my own um, skills because it's really difficult actually to draw every day when you, you work or sometimes you run out of ideas. So keep going. What are you up to? I've done my second one now, just added a bit of yellow and blue. Just really exploring, not really looking at my image at all for this, just doing what I feel um, I want to kind of explore. So a bit of cross section. And where you've done your cross section, it might be that you want to totally cover in, colour in your background too here and make that stand out if it's white and black. I love that mono, uh, monochrome where there's just this um, element of black and grey really striking and we're actually going to look at Roy Lichtenstein for anybody that's interested in pop art and the way that he renders flowers and he explores um, using black and white and real bold colours and block prints so anybody that's enjoying the cross hatching and the black and white if that's what you're exploring that'd be a perfect one for you to do Just take your time, colour in, add some things that you think, you know, you might want to bear in mind the images that we saw before, what we explored. And then when we've um, finished all four, you've guessed it, we're then going to draw that um, and make some changes what, what we think um, would make it better. So if we keep going for now, I'll give you another, just until we get, just another few minutes, just in, until we get to about quarter two, I would say. Um, and just keep going, keep exploring. And it, it might be, uh, you know, some collage would be lovely here, but you might even have some stamps, anything really that you think would, um, would add to this. And again, we know that if we press harder, then we're going to get a darker line. And that goes the same for any pencil, HB. So you could create lots of tone with um, just a simple HB pencil, school pencil. I've even drawn with an IKEA pencil before now. And that was all I had left. When I was at uni. You build your art materials up, I think, as you go along and you explore and you get more experienced. And for me, I would say most important things, if you can get them, are probably coloured pencils, maybe a nice little set of watercolours, always really worth investing in. You can do most of anything with those. But there are lots of artists that don't use colour. Just use black and white as we say before. I'd love to be Bob Ross now though and have a few squirrels on my shoulder. Just to, just to fit, you know, fit in with the legend that was. So totally different colours. Yeah. I think I might even go even more subtle on the top one and just add a tiny little bit of grey, similar to that one. And actually what you could do is you could think about, I've drawn all these in ink, haven't I? I've just used a, a little barrel, um, just a fine line colour pencil. Um, but it might be that you want to draw the flower in the actual colour that you're using. So potentially you could redraw it in just that colour 
So say for example, this one is like a beigey gray and a little bit of white. It could be that, you know, you could draw the flower in the gray, the bell shape. And then obviously because we've got a white piece of paper, you could even explore and instead of drawing the shape again, you could just draw the outside of it in the green. So you're really not drawing the shape, you're drawing the negative and then colouring around it so that you've you've not actually used any colour. So it looks more like a bubble. So you've not got an outline, you've not got that harsh line. I don't know whether you can pick that up there. So you've not got that harsh line, you've just got this background that you would colour in very neatly, not like me, we're brushing it. In fact, I don't mind that roughness of the pencil either. Okay. So think about what colours you want to add. Think about um, think about what colours you want to add. Think about how you're going to create that tone. Are you just lifting your pencil off lightly? Um, are you using cross action? Are you using lots of different colours? Um, you know, it's entirely up to you. And then um, we'll move forward. I'm just going to give you another couple of minutes. I, I, it's so difficult not being able to see you in, um, in terms of where you're up to, but I'm sure that any of this that you feel you may have been a little bit rushed through, um, you can actually um, come back to. There we go. So hopefully you can see my interpretations here. And it's just give me a real feel. So now I'm thinking, what do I like? Well, you know, I'm not too sure of the blue and the yellow together. That's not really something I wanted to achieve from this. Or do I just like the really plain line drawing similar to what you can see on the screen? Or do I like something like the purple? Do I like um, just the monochrome? So it's just black lines. You know, which one am I going to go for? And how is this? Um, in terms of um, you might have drawn them differently as well. Obviously, I just drew the same ones over again. So you could have different positions of your flower, what works better for you there. And then we're going to take literally the last 15 minutes and we're really going to explore that one that was our favourite. So don't forget the options where redrawing it in the colour. So you could just use that colour if you've got them to hand to actually redraw the flower and um, only draw the bits in that colour. So if you've got a red poppy, just draw the uh, petals in the red and the stem in the green. Um, but we um, know what Georgia O'Keefe did and she drew very large. She drew in lots of different vibrant colours and earthy tones, natural colours. She also um, used lots of different tone. So you see there as it's gone from dark grey to light on that lily. Um, and there's always a little pop of um, colour, I think, in Georgia O'Keeffe. No matter what it is, this really muted flower, this really subtle flower has got a lovely little pop of colour in the centre. So this was um, my original four. And then what I did was I just added a little bit of colour. So this was a little bit of watercolour in one of the examples that I'd done. Hopefully you can see that there. So just very subtle, um, nothing too um, striking about it really, but I quite liked it just because it was, I, I thought it was very similar to a Lily's one, a Lily one. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So keep going on your final one. So pick the one that you, you fancy the most. Think about why that is, and we're gonna draw it even bigger. So it could be that um, now we don't, um, we don't split this, the page into four. I just want you to leave it as whatever size it is. It might have an A5 sketchbook, A4 piece of paper, um, whatever it is. But if, um, I always work on a bit of scrap sometimes. It just depends on what I'm, I'm uh, working on. But be really bold and don't forget that exercise from drawing from your shoulders and really connecting to what you're looking at too. Um, so this is the last one I'm going to do. 
and then I'm really going to probably, I think I'm going to stick with um, drawing with the correct colour, I think, actually. I'm going to leave this pen to one side now. Hopefully you can see me here. But it'd be great to see if we can actually, you could share some of your work. It'd be fantastic to see what you actually created. So top. And if anyone spots any of these bladder campions, I would love to see photographs of these while you're out and about. Just look like little, little bells, don't they? So I'm just drawing in a little grey colouring in pencil. And as I say, I can notice that Obviously this is white, so I've made it a bit harder for myself, but if I draw the outline as if I'm drawing the background and colour that in. That should fit nicely. If you've got some watercolours, that'd be lovely to do a little blend, a little mix. Little mix. There we go, a bit of pop culture for you. And I'm just looking at where the darker areas are and again just pushing hard on the pencil so I get a little bit more colour. And some of these things that you'll do tonight and that you'll learn, you might not necessarily think, you know, has improved your skills but what I tend to happen is especially when I go to art classes and things like that because I regularly do I love learning about new styles and techniques is that you'll be doing something totally different and then all of a sudden you remember something that you've done it comes in handy maybe you know two months down the line when you've totally forgot about it and you're thinking oh I remember about that cross hatching. I might have a go at that here. So again, just colouring it in, thinking about tone, thinking about uh, those lovely lilies. Thinking about it might even be the landscape that floats your boat. It might be something like that. You want to do those big hills? That'd be amazing if someone's chosen to do that and see if um, somebody's ventured in or, or a skull such a lot of things that you could, could take forward. And I'd love to know your ideas as well in terms of, you know, what you'd like to draw. Um, next, what are your favourite things to draw? When do you like drawing, obviously? For me, it's this time, you know, it's a bit quieter. Days. You know, coming to an end. Stops me from sitting in front of Netflix. Not for too long. Though. I was saving that new Aladdin film for a long time because I love Disney. And I've watched it and now I'm sad I haven't got anything else to watch now. That's what happens. So I'm just continuing here to add some tone. And for me, this is looking a little bit better. I'm glad I've gone down this route of um, adding in realistic colours. I think it works a lot differently. And again, I'm really trying to still pick up on the image. What am I looking at? How accurate have I drawn that? Just going to add some tone. And that's what you used to say, isn't it? You used to have a, don't worry, it's a little happy accident. So, you know, there was no failure in Bob Ross's. I keep talking about Bob Ross tonight. I just didn't ever think this was going to happen, but 
you know, easy to say, it's only happy accidents and you can always uh, make the most of something. And, and that's absolutely true. You know, there's a lot of people that when they seen Georgia O'Keefe's work, didn't understand it, didn't get it. She was a pioneer that we're learning about now. An amazing artist. Frida Kahlo was another one. If you wanted to do a little bit of research and have a look up some of the other artists. Just adding in some detail. <laughs> Let's have a look. And the great thing is, as well, is there's, there's lots of other little projects that you can get involved in. So there's one called the 100 Day Project. And you can find that on pretty much anything, Instagram, YouTube. Maybe it's not on YouTube. Facebook. Um, and on that, on that is um, people's ideas of what they're drawing. And it's great because it's, you know, it could be anything. It could be drawing, it could be sewing, it could be um, taking photographs, photography. And it's a really lovely way and a, and a free way of keeping in touch with lots of um, different artists and people that are creative. And let's be honest, the best artists do rob and steal good ideas from each other. Um, you know, it's just an absolute must really. No, I don't think anybody really could honestly say we've not stole a bit of uh, an artist along the way and it's great because you know what my art teacher used to say to me is we have these conversations just had a conversation with Georgia O'Keefe she was brilliant you know and art's about having fun And the best thing is when you draw something, it totally doesn't look like you're what you want it to. And you do wonder how you've, you've got in that position, but you have to enjoy these things and work your way back. So again, we're just having a little bit more color. And don't forget, as I say, you've got loads more time to do this at home. I'd love to see um, your work and what come from it. And if you have started to um, look at some nature in the next couple of days, and what you'd like to draw. And George O'Keefe is just literally one style out of thousands of artists. But I picked her especially today because I love the way that she um, gets right up close to something and uh, she really wants to show everybody the details, the, the real loveliness that's maybe hidden inside of a lily, hidden inside a flower. And, uh, you know, and celebrate that and make it huge in your face. So we just got a little bit of time left. And if you do want to interact with us and you are listening to us on Facebook or YouTube, um, then you can actually go onto the Neural Love website and join that way. You can always ask questions then and I'll be able to answer you live. If that's something that you'd be interested in doing next time, I'd love to hear. I think I'm probably going to be kind the Northwest Bob Ross after this, Megan, which is an amazing um, achievement. <laughs> you know, and when to think, um, definitely. And when, and when you think, you know, when we started tonight, what we've achieved so far, so, 
We originally did scribbles, we got warmed up. And that, by the way, doesn't have to be warmed up for anything um, to do with art. You can do that if you're um, maybe getting ready for other schoolwork or you're doing something in the morning or it might be you're going to work or lots of other things that you could be doing. It'll totally get you warmed up for all of that. Um, just take your mind off um, whatever it is that you're doing, get yourself warmed up and uh, give you that a bit of creative flow. Um, so we did our scribbles. We also... Um, chose uh, two different images that we wanted to draw we drew them at the size that we could see them so we drew the, we we drew them um real size and then we used a little um window and we picked out a bit that we really liked and that we zoomed into and then we drew four different ones and don't worry if you've not done all of these you might work at a slower pace it's absolutely fine obviously um you know, we've only got an hour and a, I really want to sort of um, show you everything. But ideally, it would be drawn a little bit slower. And I think that um, you can always go and take this technique away. Um, so we drew our four and then we looked at colours and we added different things. We did a bit of cross hatching. We also looked at how to um, add pressure and colour using coloured pencils. So the harder that we press, um, the darker the colour would go and we could also blend some colours and change the um, different tones of the pencils that we use or if you've used watercolours um, hopefully then you've been able to find different washes and uh, tones with those and then I just moved on to a little bit of um, what was a, a suggestion really of drawing the uh, with the right colour that matched the um, elements of the flower or whatever it was that you're drawing so here I drew the outside because mine was white um, and then a, a little bit of grey um, for the centre of the flower and then this is my, um, my final one so I've done lots of blending and um, very similar to what Georgia O'Keefe has done there and I've zoomed right into my flower and I think I could even push this even further and go further into it and create more of an abstract piece but it'd be great to see um, your work and what you've really enjoyed from today it'd be great to um, hear any comments of what you liked if you can share them on Twitter that would be great or Instagram and that I think we have a hashtag um, but there is a um, at Nora love I'm sure I could literally just colour in all night though it's something that's really therapeutic for me um, I start getting itchy feet if I don't do art for a long time. I think it's something that, um, you know, it's a hobby that you like, you like practicing. I wanted actually just to go a little bit darker here as well. So it stands out. And keep playing, keep manipulating things. Remember what Bob Ross says, it's only happy accidents. There's no failures. Um, so the um, if you tag in, if you want to share any of your work, which would be amazing to see, it's at Neuro Champions. Um, so you'll be able to find that on Twitter. And it's hashtag virtually social. Thanks, Meg. So just a couple more minutes left. I'll finish off some of the detail. And then I'll say goodbye to you for another week. Hopefully you join me again next Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? This is the million dollar question, isn't it? Does anybody know what day it is? I'm sure it's Tuesday. Thanks. Um, Tuesday at six till seven. We'll have a little bit more fun. And hopefully if you join us on here, then I'll be able to chat back to you. And we can have a little bit of a discussion over the work you're doing. If you've got any questions that you want to ask, Please, please feel free to put it on there and I'll get back um, to you. I'd love to be able to support you. If you want to go to um, the website to actually sign up to the classes, it's norolove.org. So don't forget to go there as well. And it's not just me. There's a team of fantastic people that are doing loads of other stuff. Um, there's fitness, dance. Um, there's yoga. What else have we got? Anxiety um, support. It's, it's um, amazing really to see how many 
Um, and yeah, I'll definitely need that. It's amazing to see how many people have got such talent and skills. Um, there's also a sleep workshop if anybody needs that as well. Um, so I hope this has been really enjoyable for you. I've loved um, sharing Georgia O'Keefe with you tonight. Um, she is one of the special artists and I particularly love the fact that she was such a pioneer and really brave and fearless in what she did. So carry on with the great work, keep it up, um, keep trying new things and hopefully I'll see you next week for Gustav Klimt. So a huge thanks to Georgia O'Keefe and a huge thanks to you and congratulations for joining tonight's session.